don't cut yourself. <laughs> it's the most important thing. Um, yeah, honestly, the main thing I tell people is, especially if you haven't been doing this long or you're just starting out, don't try to make it look like anything your first time out. Just doodle with a knife. Look for a shape. Let the shape tell you what to do. Because if you're trying to make it look like something and you're not really used to doing this, it's usually not going to. And that's when you get mad at it and you're like, well, I don't want to do this anymore. And, and you walk away and you never do it again. So when I'm doing these, I go in with really low expectations. I just make it up as I go along. I almost never have a plan. Like with this one, I just started with the nose and, uh, or the eyes. And you just go from there and just kind of let the pumpkin tell you what to do. Don't use a candle, because you're just not going to get enough light to do justice to it. Cut a hole in the back and use a lamp or a flashlight, and that way you're pointing the light where you want it to go. You know, candles kind of go off in all directions with the light. With mine, when I get done carving them, I spray them with a hairspray. And the reason I'm doing that is when you're taking the skin off, it's the same as if you cut yourself and you put something on it so you don't get an infection. Um, hairspray has alcohol in it. And when I'm peeling the skin off, it's the bacteria in my hands is getting in this and it's already attacking it. So you spray the hairspray on it, it'll kill the bacteria. Then it puts a little coating on it that keeps the air off it. Then the third benefit is, especially if you're putting them outside, squirrels won't eat it if you put hairspray on it. And the other, the main secret though to get them to last is you have to baby them along. You have, to, if you just set them out in the sun and wind, they're going to go right away. If you can keep them in the shade, keep them somewhere where it's moist and cool, they'll last a lot longer. Simple stuff. You know, I tell people clean out your junk drawer. You've already got everything you need, pretty much. You know, and I'm using an exacto knife here. Just a little pen knife, a uh, kitchen paring knife. This one's a little different. It's a little paring knife, but if you can see, this is the front of the blade. The blade curves in. And I like this for when I'm doing corner work. I can do a lot of detail with it. And then uh, just little play tools. Nothing fancy. I mean, I've got a whole toolbox full of stuff. That's just to impress the girls. This is basically what I use. But there's no right tool, there's no wrong tool. You work with whatever you're comfortable working with. You know, I know so right now, can you visualize everything? Just parts of it, not the whole thing. I could if I tried. I'm not really trying to, though. I've learned to let it kind of develop. And, you know... The thing is, you know, I want to stress with that is everyone's got their own artistic process, so that's just mine. I mean, yours might be something completely different from what I do. I don't carve at all, but when, it was, when you put it up there, we had the other side facing us, mm -hmm. and I thought of an animal. I could see an animal in it. Oh yeah, it kind of, I mean, when I do the turkeys or stuff like that, or bird, it, this looks like a bird's head with a beak on it, and that kind of looks like a tail, you could put wings on it. I mean, that's what I would see, but I see you might have seen something completely a different. I see a manatee, yeah. Well, that's just crazy. Well, that's what I thought, too. It's like, I have <laughs> Nobody else sees that. Actually, I thought a walrus. <laughs> that's what I was thinking. Go somewhere and sober up, sir. <laughs>